Now, this is something you might not have known. Within these little buttons, you might you might think to yourself, well, what, what are those buttons doing? How, how do they work? Each one of those buttons is kind of like a macro. It's a, a little container that includes four service names on the back end. You can't see these. They're sort of implied. Back in the old days, before we had these cool buttons and icons and stuff, we had to configure four different policies. So these here are policies. They're over here on the right. We had to configure manually four different policies. We'd call one Zscaler underscore primary underscore Z1, primary Z2, backup Z1, backup Z2. So inside this button are four, are the, is this exact list of service names. Now this, I'll show you why this is important in a minute. So this is like a shortcut. And the same reason why this is important, guys, is the same thing goes for the Netscope button. This is a uh, service orchestration created button, and they get processed from top to bottom. So the way you read this is the service name it would be service name underscore the label designation followed by the pop. Now, let me show this. Uh, okay, yes. And so for each one of the buttons, the list of names is different. So like for Zscaler up there, the service names would be Zscaler underscore primary Z1. For the service orchestration created buttons, um, it'll use this thing called the service prefix, which, I'll, which we'll talk about and I'll show you shortly. It'd be service prefix underscore primary backup underscore one or two. So you might say, what is primary backup and one and two? What does that mean? Well, if you look closely at the way the Zscaler service is configured, you click interface labels up here at the top, and you're presented with this panel that gives you a primary box and a backup box. The primary box, you drag over the labels that you want to be considered primary. All, all labels that are in the primary box get load balanced automatically. If you have two primary, in fact, everywhere throughout the Edge Connect product, pretty much, we, if you have two things that are primary, we do a waterfall or a load balance on them. That's just sort of a general premise, even local breakout, everything works that way. And then we have varying degrees of intelligence as to how you waterfall or load balance. For instance, best local breakout subsystem incorporates inferred latency stats and loss stats from tunnels. This mechanism doesn't know anything about latency or loss. It just uses, it says these are all primaries. Therefore, if they're up, I'm going to load balance. We're going to roll a two, if I have an INET A and a B, I'm going to roll a two-sided dice and it's going to come up as INET A. So I'm going to put this flow on INET A and keep it there. Remember, we don't reclassify or move internet flows from one label or one path to another ever because it breaks the NAT and we can't, can't easily do that. But the, the takeaway here is that when you do this, when you drag something into this primary section, and then you go look closely at the pass-through tunnels that are created by the Zscaler uh, orchestration subsystem, you'll see that, well, you'll see this. You'll see that uh, the primaries will pick up like third-party underscore Zscaler INA A primary Z1 and Z2. The Z1 and Z2, these are the Zens. So we, as a part of Zscaler, we, we query their, their portal. We say, here's our lat long. Um, what Zens do you recommend? We get back a list of Zens. We compare the Zens to the current country for the appliance, filter Zens that aren't in the country, and then take whatever's left. And then the top one at the list becomes Z1, the primary Zen, and the second one in the list becomes Z2, the secondary Zen. This works out pretty in a pretty interesting way because now, um, if you look over here in the peer service, the way this works, the way the load balancing is enabled, the way it's engaged, is if two tunnels have the same peer or service name, then they're considered they're they're in the same cross connect group that they're 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 load balanced together. So if we look over here, we see that um, INA A primary Z1 has Zscaler primary Z1. And then INET B primary Z1 has Zscaler primary Z1. So see, these two are the exact same. Even though their label's different, INET A and B, the service is the same. That's why INET A and B will load balance if they are um, both up at the same time. It's always third party underscore the service name, the label, the label uh, designation. Label designation. So like uh, this would be primary sure. versus backup. This field is derived from these boxes, right? And then the underscore 
the endpoint designation. And we'll call that the pop. So uh, in the case of Zscaler, it, uses, it puts a Z at the end. In the case of service orchestration, it doesn't it just omits the Z and just puts underscore one or two. One is um, synonym for the primary pop. Two would be a synonym for the secondary pop. So here's the Zscaler typical configuration. If we look at the top right up here, we've configured INA A, B, and C as primary and backup is LTA. Here's our deployment page. We have LTA, uh, INA A and B configured, with three underlays on our WAN side. And the resulting tunnels that will be built by the orchestration look just like this. So INA A, B, and LTA, primary Z1, and LTA backup Z1 and 2. See how, L see how LTA has this backup in the name of the tunnel? That came from right here. Hopefully you guys can see my mouse moving around, but the backup LTA is back up here. This gets translated directly into this. Uh, the, the point here though, is that this, if you look at the way service orchestration does this and the way Zscaler does this, that they're exactly the same. Um, so let me just kind of flip back and forth. Notice down here at the bottom, you've got INET, you know, INET A, primary Z1. If you look at the service orchestration, same thing. Third party, NSK, the, you know, the, the, um, uh, the, the pop endpoint, the label backup, and then one or two. So one is the primary Netscope and two will be the backup. All right, let, let's, let's talk about Netscope a little bit.